Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk with you guys about what resources are. Now we're still kind of in that introductory period of our economics course, and I want to make sure that you guys can grasp what resources. You know, resources play an important role in both the definitions of economics and scarcity. And when you look at it, probably also opportunity cost, even though not directly. So I want to take today, I want to cover the resources and what we're going to do. So the objects and the objectives of this are to understand the three different types of resources and to understand what a resource is. So what are resources? The warm-up question. What are the resources in the room? How many are rare? How many are plentiful? What constitutes what a resource is? Jot down your ideas. This is the silent portion where you guys are going to silently think about it. In a moment, we're going to go to a pair, and then ultimately we're going to share out with the class. If you're watching at home, please pause the video. Complete this. Find somebody to talk to. Alright, so hopefully you guys came up with some really great ideas about resources and what resources are. But what our working definition is, it's a source or supply from which benefit from which a benefit is produced. Typically, these resources are materials, energy, services, staff, knowledge, or other assets that are tr transformed to produce benefit and in the process may be consumed or made unavailable. So resources are not always renewable. Resources can be a variety of things. And a resource is something that helps us benefit. And that's a big idea here is we want to make sure that we are benefiting from a resource. All right, we want to make sure that when we talk about these resources that we understand kind of what these things are. So what kind of benefits can we get from a resource? What are some of those things that resources can provide for us? So as we talked about in class, we know that a resource can increase wealth, can fulfill needs or wants, can proper the function of a system, or enhance well-being. So resources can do all of these different things. Now an increased wealth is if I have a rare resource. All right, or if I need something that's fulfilled or I want something, I can fulfill it with one of those resources. It could be the proper function of a system. Maybe my car engine needs uh, the resource of oil to kind of function properly and not wear out. And ultimately, the enhanced well-being, you know, if I eat and eat good things from the earth, natural things, I should be healthier. So in economics, we have three different ideas about resources, and I want to think of what you guys think of resources specifically in our economics class. So talk about this with me real quick. So there are many types of economic resources, as you guys told me. Human capital and natural. Now, what might be an example of a human resource? What's an example of a capital resource? And what's an example of a natural resource? What are all those things going to be? Take a moment. Think about this. I'll come back. Everybody should write something down for me. We have three types of resources. The human, the human resources, the health, education, experience, training, skills, and value of people. Sometimes referred to as human capital. Now, a human resource would be a worker, right? the education of a worker, the experience of a worker, the training of a worker, and the values of people in general. Right? That's what makes a human resource or human capital happen, is we start to kind of see those ideas taking place and those ideas making it so that we can actually have the benefit of that human work. Capital resources, the second type of capital resources, items that are made or used to assist in the production and distribution of goods and services. All right, so when we talk about that, we talk about things like, you know, a capital resource being a machine, maybe a drill press, you know, still needs a human resource to bring it down, but could definitely be a capital resource because it's being used to assist in the production. Maybe a road is a capital resource, a driveway, a runway for an airport can be a capital resource because those all help in the production or distribution of a good or service. And that's kind of where capital resources is. You'll find a lot of capital resources in our class or in economics or in anywhere you know there's a lot of human resources a lot of capital resource and the last one is natural resources and there's also a lot of natural resources as well it's a resource that can be used to produce goods or services and that occurs naturally so it's important that we kind of remember that it occurs naturally because it's one of those things that i'm not creating a light bulb not not a natural resource right the light bulb is man-made so the light bulb can be 
created by man, or it can be a capital resource and built by a machine. All right, not saying that men and women can't build, you know, capital resources, but you know, it's it's a mass production resource, and it provides me with light. Now, if I had a big window and I didn't turn the light on in my house, it could be, you know, I'm getting the natural resource of the sun there. So here's a couple examples of it. And this first one, you can kind of see. You know, it's kind of a natural resource, it's kind of a capital resource, and it's kind of a human resource. So the guy in the background walking with the cart would be our human. The horse, the rails, the cart, the wood used, all right, and the way that it's used would be a capital resource. And obviously this is a mine, so it's coming out of something in the ground, and it's likely going to be a natural resource, not put there by man. All right, in the next picture, we kind of see a combination, again, of that. We see five workers, right? And these five workers are working on the Boulder Dam in Nevada, later to be renamed the Hoover Dam, in case you were wondering, right? And the Boulder Dam is there with the five workers there. Those five men are human capital, human resources, right? They're leaning up against the bulldozer blade, which is a capital resource, right? And they use the water that was already there to build the dam, Right, and they used the or parts of the earth to make the cement, so forth and so on. You can see that when we talk about resources, it can get pretty complicated, and even the simplest things may have multiple types of resources in it. Last but not least, we have a factory down here with a truck out front, all right, and that's more of a capital resource, right? But it's taking up part of the land, which makes it also, you know, as something that's using a natural resource, which is space on our earth. Right, those bricks are probably made out of something natural, and inside we probably have sh machinery. So we can kind of see that it's not that clear cut and that simple. And I want to kind of take a look and see if you guys can identify some of these things. All right, so what resources are pictured in this? We have a human resource. All right, we have a capital resource. The rails that the cart is rolling on is another capital resource. And then we have natural resources kind of all around this guy because he's coming out of the earth. He's digging something out. He's a miner emerging from a tunnel is the official name of the picture. All right, let's look at another one. Here's a hydroelectric dam in, I believe, India. So let's, what are the resources pictured here? We have capital resource because the dam is man-made. We have the natural resource of the water flowing over the thing. That's it. Those are the only two resources that we have in this picture. All right, here's a factory that made the P-39 uh, fighter plane during World War II. And you guys can kind of look and see, and you see there's quite a bit of things in here. But most of these things, because we have no workers, are going to be capital items that are used to assist in the production of that plane. Next, we have some women working in a factory. Right? And there's a giant saw in there, so I'm not really kind of sure what kind of assembly plant this is, but it's it's here nonetheless. So start to look and we see our human resources and the, the women that are working and helping produce a good. Now we start going to the capital resources. When we talk about the saws that they're using, the tables, the different tools, the buckets, all of those are capital resources. Natural resources, there's some natural light coming in through those windows, and that's a natural resource for the purposes of a resource. So this is pretty intense on what's in here and what's not. Last but not least, we have a farmer, right, making hay on a farm in the 1930s. So this is kind of like early on in the mechanical age, and we're not quite sure kind of how much is there, but we have some, right? So let's go through and check out these resources. We have human resources in the farmers. We have a natural resource in the land. All right. We have capital resources in the tractors. All right. Capital resources in the in the livestock in the background. Natural resources in the land. Natural resources in the trees. And again, capital resources in the cart. All right. The tools that they use are also capital resources. So think about the resources that go into these items. What are resources in this bicycle? Can you identify them? Well, which ones are capital resources, which ones are natural resources, and which one are human resources, All right? So as we kind of go forward, I want us to kind of start to look at this and think about, you know, which one falls where. And part of your exercise today is going to be to identify how these things go. And what we'll do is we'll kind of put these ideas in the box. So in the human resources, there's probably somebody that A, sold the bicycle to you, B, helped you put the bicycle together, or C, built the bicycle at a factory, right? Those three things make it 
those three things would be quickly identifiable human resources. When we talk about natural resources, well, rubber is a natural substance, so it comes from there. The, the bike's probably made out of aluminum, which is, 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 does occur naturally as well. So you can kind of see that in there as you go. You've got the chain, you've got the lubricants, and then it's probably part of the natural too. But the capital would be like, well, we've put all this stuff together. So if we're talking about this bike, this bike could be a capital good. It could help me get other things done. So the bike as a whole might be capital, right? We could talk about the things like the chain, something that is is taken small pieces and put together, and each chain link would be a capital. Each spoke would be a capital resource, all right? Each uh, socket, each seat, each handlebar, the cables, the wires, all of this stuff that goes into making this complex bicycle would be part of those resources. So with that, I'd like to thank you guys for watching today. Um, hopefully we've got a great idea of this, and I'm going to put you to kind of work a little bit on the back side of your note sheet where it's going to say kind of like what are you looking for and, and how do you do it. I'm going to make you pick a product, and I'm going to make you talk about time. What type of resource is time?